Morning. Welcome back to another episode of Ali's Digger Diary. It's Tuesday morning. It is five past eleven. Um, I've already been to my first breakdown, which is just outside of Carlisle. Diagnosed the fault. Customers ordered the bits, and he's going to fit them himself. That's fine. Um, and then I've had to rush back here. There's a couple of machines that we need to move about for the show and then there's a machine on the stand itself which I'd rug parts off so I need to put the parts back on that. Show's tomorrow and I'm going to be out for the rest of the day so I need to get those little boxes ticked. Um, so yeah, I've been kind of like buzzing about all over the parish this morning. I feel like I've not stopped but uh, I am certainly going to enjoy this next hour and a half. I'm heading to Glasgow um, we've got a DL I'm pretty sure it's a 280 I'll have to have a look at the email a DL loading shovel anyway it's our demonstrator um, so I've got to go and install it because the lads that are in that area are flat out busy I mean I'm busy enough but obviously not busy enough um, to go and do that and then back down the road with a bit of a detour into the hills i've got a 160 high track uh i think it cut out won't restart so he's already been and checked the filters filter head i was on the front of him yesterday so he's got as far as he can go without me turning up so that's what i'm gonna go and do this afternoon the weather is good the sun is shining feels like we've really turned a corner with the weather this last couple of days it's been feels like spring it really does which is a uh, which is grand, like, you know, it, it just puts a spring in your a spring in your step. Okay, I'm chasing the chopper out of here. What a monster. This is one of the show specials, look. It's got the Carlisle United livery on it. Any football fans? Ooh, sneak peek. Oh, I don't think it will. No, it won't be a sneak peek, because by the time you see this video, it'll be Wednesday. Will it be Wednesday? No, it'll be Thursday, which means that the show will be finished. So yeah, you can see everything's all set out now. The weather is good. Right, let's go. Right, so that went well. Um, I wasn't just too sure uh, what I was coming to. Not machine-wise, but was I uh, going to be installing the machine with half a dozen drivers or showing the director of the company around and um, but yeah I was just showing the driver how to uh, sort of set up the dash what all the buttons do where all the level checkpoints are they're gonna have this machine for a week put it through its paces so this is a DL280 it's a demonstrator um, they've had it since yesterday um, but yeah they seem pretty happy with it now that they know how to do the return to dig, how to set the transmission up for different tasks, etc. This is, um, it's got a Doosan engine, DL06, which would be the same engine that's in a 225, 210 uh, digger. Uh, we've got a ZF transmission, which is a smaller version of what is in the larger shovels. Um, and the only thing they commented on that they weren't so keen on was the lack of auto lube which is easily specced at the time of ordering you can spec the auto lube and I don't think it comes from the factory but we get a company to come and fit it up with auto grease at all the grease points apart from the uh, drive shaft in there but yeah they said it's a lovely compact machine with plenty of power um, it's working in this brickyard where they make and produce bricks. And it was interesting actually, so they produce 34 different types of brick in here. And each one of these piles is separate different material. Although these three piles here look the same, maybe that's a bit darker. That mixed with a bit of that and then a little bit less of that produces one color of brick and you know, Makes sense really that there's different recipes for different colour bricks, but I'd never really given it a thought. So, that yeah, was quite interesting. Anyway, I managed to get up here for um, half past 12. It's now 10 past 1. 
which means that I'm sort of an hour ahead of where I thought I would be today, which is excellent because I wouldn't, I would like to be home at a decent time tonight. Um, yeah, coming back on Friday night, I stopped for some tea at a McDonald's and I was FaceTiming the kids as they were going to bed and uh, sat eating a burger that I wasn't particularly enjoying, thinking, this is miserable. <laughs> You know, I don't mind working overtime, don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, kids are only young for so long, aren't they? Um, and then I was late back last night, so I should uh, try and get home tonight because the next two nights I'll be at the Rickaby show, so yeah, that is good. Right, let's go and do this breakdown uh, back down the road and then a bit of a detour into the hills look at a high track in the woods that was running yesterday and cut out and it won't restart i think we're looking at an electric lift pump so i've got one um i've got filters can't think about else it would be i've got a relief valve for the rail perkins engine yeah let's see what we see Right, we're back out the big city and into my normal habitat. Middle of nowhere. Perfect for me. Um, right, so this digger, uh, the engine stopped on him um, yesterday. He's had this filter off and the filter head off and cleaned it all out and still won't start. So what we're gonna do is pop the uh, this pipe here into here. Uh, now that's just gravity feeding that we'll get them to turn the ignition on and we'll see how much fuel comes out so he's gonna oh oh it's like loads coming out of there so i would say that was a decent flow it was a little bit surgy but it should be enough to feed the engine all right, I'll unplug it from here. This is where it gets a bit clatty because I need to kind of catch it. Uh, hang on, let's just stop all that coming out of there first. Right, do you want to turn the ignition on again? Oh no, it's coming out of there. Whoa! Whoa! So we've got a good supply of diesel. Why won't it start? Any bit of starting it today? No. No. Hmm. Oh. It's uh, it's one of those machines where it feels my presence and it doesn't misbehave. Hmm. He said it would have conked out by now, normally. Don't know how to explain that. I don't. I, I, the only thing I can assume is when he's had that filter off, he's introduced air to it, because he said he had the filter off, blew that um, filter head out, put it all back together, he said he tracked it back towards the roadside and it comped out on him again um, and then he ran it he pulled the, he was on the phone to me so he pulled the fuel filter pipe off like I've done he said it was sort of coughing and spluttering out of there a bit which is why I brought one of them with me but it's absolutely singing there at the minute that's the only thing I can suggest is that that filter because he said there was muck in that filter head when he uh, when he stripped it down and then he's introduced air to it uh, and then it's pumped out but the error code that's logged is e one five uh, e triple which is low rail pressure which generally is start with the filter head and work your way towards the Left pump basically, generally. You see, it's going to be one of those ones, isn't it, Al? Where you pack up and go. I 
go back to work and you get back through to Carlisle and I give you a phone again. I said, I hope not. <laughs> I want to go home tonight. Have me tea while it's hot. <laughs> We've just had a look over it again. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to sit and have my lunch for half an hour. A late lunch, admittedly. Um, I'll have my lunch for half an hour, watch him work away. He said he'll know after 15 minutes working it, but what's the best way to describe it? See, I'll show you, look. Hang on. He was saying yesterday when he was trying to fetch it back to the roadside, it would hardly, hardly climb up, hardly climb up that ramp there. Um, it would hardly climb up that ramp for stalling out. Uh, and so he just parked it up there and waited for me to come today and he says, oh god, if I'd have known it was going to do that, I'd have been working it this morning so when you did turn up, I'd have something to show you. It's just one of them, isn't it? I got about 20 minutes away and it stopped. Good. I can fix it now. Let's go and see what it's doing. Right, so if I got the check engine light, it's E triple O one five seven dash eighteen. Sounds like it's running all right, but then when I put the engine under load, it just bogs down and dies of death. So let's have a look. Fuel. Uh, we've got the uh, pump there. Right. So we've done the same test again pulling those pipes off. You can see I've got a bit of fuel there, but um, it pumped a bit out and then it stopped pumping it all together. Um, so I think it's gonna end up needing that. But we'll check for restrictions um, in the filter head and back to the tank. He's gonna try and get it towards the van. I'm gonna get a boiler seal and it's quite chilly now. So I'm gonna put that one on. Um yeah, it's all go. Right, so we're gonna check the fuel flow through this filler head. But still I'm gonna clamp that off. Take this water and fuel plug it off. Undo this filter. We've got another one of these if we need it. Head looks clean. Next, we'll take this pipe off. This is the pipe that's going to that lift pump over there. Just inspect that visually, make sure there's no kinks in it because something stupid like that could cause it. It looks alright. And that one's a 24, of course it is. Go and grab a 24 spanner. So, this pipe here comes straight out the tank. Don't be a pain. That's gonna. Oh, need two 24s now. Right. Okay, let's take this off. This pipe's from the tank. Tank to the filter head's good. Just leave that to sit there. That will strip this filter head down now. Uh, 
at a glance it looks clean. Take it to the van. I'll take this plate off here, just make sure there's no sat behind here. I think I slackened that one off already. Okay, filter head is back on. Um, come back to the van now to collect my tools for to take the pump off. Side cups. At least I can try out these. The last time I did one of these pumps, I said I need to get some of these to take the pipes off. So we'll give them a go. Um, I need a... I'm sure I used... No then, can't remember last time whether I tried to do it with a quarter drive and gave up and used a tape off. Uh, 10 mil. Uh, smaller than you expect Allen key, I think it's that one. Although I might take the next size up just in case. Is that right? What's that? Four and uh, Five, I think it's the four. Um, 13. Uh, extension. What else should I take? Uh, I need a short extension for my 3 8 drive. Wobbly head, that'll be nice. 10 mil for me. Bolts, knife, and a pump. Now, even with a head cam on, you won't see what I'm doing because everything that I'm doing is by touch. Because even I can't see. So, no sort of camera will be able to watch what I'm doing next. But believe me, I'll be. Uh, I'll be, I'll be, oh, this next bit isn't fun. Okay, so the electric lift pump is down here, down back of here, all the way down there. There's the plug for it somewhere. Where's the plug? Down there. Ish. We need to take that ECU plug off and then the P clip that holds it. Um, so, yeah, it's right down the back of there. At least the engine isn't too hot. So, I'm staying nice and warm on top of here. Right, let's get right in about it, shall we? Well, it's not gone too bad. Um, the last one that I did I seem to take forever doing but that one I think maybe because I've done it reasonably recently I knew what tools to fetch up so it was half the fight uh, that's the old one it's a new one so yeah we'll reach all the way back down there and mount it that's the worst bit now mounting it because you've got to hold it whilst trying to get bolts lined up and um, those they work a treat the top one isn't too bad to get onto, but then you take, yeah, that's right, you remove that one, get your three bolts out, unplug it, and then pull it forward, or pull it towards the counterweight, and you can just manage to get those uh, pliers on. Right, we'll get this run back in now. Right, so we're going to fill the filters up now. Oh, I've got my vice grips on there, that ain't going to help. Right up. So that filter's filling up. 
can already tell that's a lot stronger floor, look. Any minute now, hopefully. Any minute now. There we go. Right, he's away working again. Uh, told him to go and do a bit of work. Um, not to be rude, but just to get him to work the machine out. Because once I got that lift pump on, I sort of, when I bled it all up and everything, I sort of thought, God, there's a fair bit of fuel about. And I looked into the engine bay from the top, and you know, it was fairly damp in there. Now I thought it might have just been what I what will have came out the pipes when I had them uh, when I had them pipes off the lift pump but there's a lot in there like and I don't think I'll have made much of a mess so I've taken the bottom belly plate off under the engine which was fairly sore um, and I've checked all the pipes right from the filters all the way up to the lift pump to the injection pump um, you know, I've run my hand along them as best I can. I can't feel any nips and abra nips or abrasions to it, but I don't know, it does make me suspicious as though it could be drawing air. Um, but at the same time, with a much better fuel flow through that new pump. And I think, you know, anyway, it took me, I would be about, 15 minutes away when he phoned me um, and I came back so I'm hoping the time it takes me to quietly put all my tools away get my boiler suit off get in the van turn the ignition on and set off driving <laughs> I'm hoping that's if it's gonna break down again it'll do it in that time frame so yeah I've, I've dried everything up as well in there so if there is something I'll be able to hopefully trace it a bit easier because everything was just covered and in that engine bay you've got the fan running all the time so that makes it a bit trickier because these are quite light so it just splashes everywhere um, right well uh, I'll finish tidying my tools up and we'll see what happens so some of you that's new to the channel might be wondering what is this digger doing in the middle of nowhere just putting out mounds of soil like that so once the woodland's been harvested so uh, when it gets to that kind of an age that'll get totally clear felled like this um sometimes the brash which is the branches of the trees sometimes that gets extracted which is what's happened on this site see it's quite muddy down there well what's happened is they've heaped all the brash up all the sticks and branches right the way along there and a chipper comes in and chips it that's biomass um and then this fella will come in and put these mounds out so each mound of soil here is going to be planted with a, a new tree like them and then they'll grow into that there's a bit of management in between you don't just plant them and clear off um, you'll get first and second thinnings so as the trees get larger they'll take a row of trees out in the wood um, and then they'll do it again sort of 20 years time so 10 years time I think it's about that they'll thin it first thinnings and then they'll thin it second thinnings 20 years and then about 30 or 40 years it'll sort of look like that so it's a crop just like a farmer plants barley and wheat um, that's what a lot of these woodlands are they're all commercial crops so it's not deforestation as such it's just no different to a forager turning up and chopping up a load of maize you know 
but it's not every year it's every 30 or 40 years so that's what he's doing he sort of there's different sorts of mounding um and i don't want to go i don't really know a great deal about it but that's that's what he's doing he's got a 160 high track so the top part of half of it there is a 14 tonner dx140 and the bottom half is a high track undercarriage so it's pretty much designed for use in the woods or it's ideal for use in the woods because it's got a high ground clearance which means as he goes up the row of stumps you can even see daylight under there at the minute you can the, the undercarriage clears the stumps um, and uh, the undercarriage is heavy duty as well compared to a 14 tonner so those 14 tonners were or the, the sorry the high tracks um are a new were a new product uh for the dash 5 range before that um everyone was using dx140s with heavy duty under like heavy duty guarding underneath um various different ideas that Foker came up with to reinforce the carriage and things but now there's a sort of off the shelf product that ticks all the boxes. So that's what a lot of the machines are doing that I look after. Um, and they range from, like I say, 14 ton to 20 ton. Some of the drivers would say that the 20 tonners are a bit big for the job. Others quite like the power because you, you've got a lot of power to rip stumps out and things like that. Um, but yeah, different horses for different courses, I suppose. So yeah, that's what, that's what, that machine does okay right i'm gonna go and sit in the van tell you what if it was any if it was two or three months further down the line i bet the midges would be horrendous right now okay it's five to six which will get me home for half past seven which is a bit unfortunate um he's worked it there doesn't seem to have been any bother uh, he'll get a good day's work out of it tomorrow hopefully and we won't hear back from him if it does phone us back it's got to be it's got to be drawing air in somewhere I think just yeah we'll see how it goes he's quite happy anyway very apologetic to keep us back so late I says hey it's just the nature of the job it's the nature of the job isn't it you know maybe I should have just it's a one of them like when I was there at half past two I'd have had that lift pump on by half past three and you know leaving at half past three I'd have been home for five o'clock but you don't want to fit parts expensive parts as well to folks machines if they don't need them you know what I mean um, so yeah it's just a one of them isn't it Anyway, we'll see you in the morning. Don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. Uh, I've got a couple of services to do. I've also got a track pin press to get back up to Dumfries. Oh no, I do know what I'm going to do now actually. Aye, there's, a, there's a 180 with hydraulic problems. That needs to go and get seen to first. So that'll be the morning's job. So, welcome back. It's uh, Wednesday afternoon now i've been down at a 180 um diagnosed a hydraulic pump failure um so i'll um what i'll do is i'll the footage from that i'll put into the video when i'm replacing the pump then it just keeps everything tidy so we've got a new hydraulic pump to go on a machine down the road unfortunately um this customer phoned us at uh, nine o'clock he'd done a couple of hours work with it this morning bogged down and died of death so we're back up here i did say last night when i was sort of packing up i wasn't happy with the amount of diesel about um so i wasn't entirely surprised anyway after taking all these panels off in here taking the engine breather off so i can see all the fuel piping going to the high pressure fuel pump um customer took the belly plate off before I arrived we finally come to a conclusion with what's wrong with it but that, that is what was wrong with it so the when I turned the ignition on last night the pump sounded like it was 
searching um, for diesel. Not all the time, just very occasionally, it sounded like it grabbed a mouthful of air. And with the amount of diesel that was about in there, I just took another 40 minutes <laughs> to check all the fuel piping because I just, I wasn't 100% happy with it, but they do sometimes have a bit of a kind of murmuration now and again. So when he went away and worked and everything seemed all right, I thought, well, we'll maybe all right. Um, Anyway, I've uh, basically traced all the fuel piping. There's no nicks or abrasions in it. Um, so what we did was we took the outlet from the fuel pump. I put a rubber pipe on it, wherever it's gone. Put it into that drum. And sure enough, it was sort of fits and starts and quite aerated. Um, so we knew it was, the fault was between this filter and the electric lift pump was good because after the electric lift pump it then goes up around the engine to the far side where it goes in through the ECU and out through the ECU then it goes down to the fuel cooler out the fuel cooler uh, into that pipe over there comes down and into here uh, into here sorry is that right yeah that's right, no, that, that comes straight out of the ECU, sorry. So it comes from the lift pump, up around the engine, through the ECU, and back to here. So there's multiple connections like this, um, and pipe work that's clipped in behind wiring harnesses and EGR coolers and all sorts where it could have rubbed or cracked. Um, and it seemed to be with the heat of the machine, it seemed to sort of, have its problem that's what i was thinking anyway because we worked it for two hours this morning and then it faulted um so yeah we then changed the fitting that goes that comes off the pump for a new fitting put it into the drum and there's a lovely stream of diesel so then we've fitted that back onto the pump took it off here and again we've got a nice stream of diesel so all along that's what it's been so now I'm going to pull that old pump, uh, pull the new pump that I fed yesterday back off. Um, I'm going to do it from downstairs now that the belly plate's off because it is just up in there. And um, we'll put the, I've got the old one with us. Pull that back on and then uh, put all these plates back together. But I feel more confident now uh, that we've found the problem because I was, I, I just had a, you just have that feeling you got, don't you, that something isn't right? And yeah, how long do you stay with the machine as well? How long do you sit around waiting for something to happen that might not happen? Um, so yeah, right, that is where we're up to. I'm gonna batter on now and get all this stuff changed back over, but I just thought I'd show you that uh, not everything goes to plan and sometimes you should trust your gut. <laughs> okay. Okay, he's happy. I'm happy. You do just get some of these days, don't you? I was so grumpy this morning. Um, you know, telling someone that his hydraulic pump's knackered, that's gonna be an expensive job. And then having this to come up to again, it's, uh, I give me a hard time about it, I really do, but I feel like, I feel like I'm coming away this time with the job sorted, so pleased about that. Right, it's half past three. It'll be five o'clock when I get back through to Carlisle. I've got my jeans and a clean t-shirt. <laughs> uh, better find somewhere to do my makeup as well. But I've got the Rickaby show. Uh, I've got to be on the stand this evening. So yeah, I'll, I'll not wind the video up just yet because I'll show you a bit of the show. Maybe you might want to see that, you might not. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna go and do now. Don't think I've got out else to add to that. All right. Right, it's just after six o'clock. The stand is quiet, probably because everybody's at home having the tea before they come out to the show. But this is our little patch here, next to a limited edition grey class tractor, and then a mini one, and then a mini mini version so yeah 
this is me for the next four hours and then uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings but uh, what I'll do is I'll show you around the show when it's quiet tomorrow morning uh, tomorrow evening and I'll put that at the beginning of the next video so I hope you've enjoyed today's video I'm not sure what it'll amount to I don't know when I'll get this video edited and put online because I'll be late on tonight and I'll just want to go to bed so thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one